How are you doing guys? Logan from Kyle Town Spray Foam. <coughs> Gonna do a job walkthrough with you guys. Got a whole house for spraying. Doing it in two phases, but I'll walk around and show you what we got for phase one. Spin the camera around here. Basically what we got going on is we're spraying three inches of closed cell and all these walls. All the way around. Take you out the side here. Uh, my way. Slither my way through. Got these nice porches on the outside. All these nice doors. Coming in here to this little garage, one big garage for his tractor, I believe is what it's for. Spraying three inches on everything. Top to bottom. And here. Take it back inside, we'll go down in the basement. There's the rig warming up. Got ourselves a nice cold day here. 11 degrees. First thing in the morning. It's supposed to get up to 37. This week's supposed to get up to 50, 55, so that's going to be awesome. But I guess we had to deal with a nice, nice little uh, cold day before the before the sunshine. But come back down here. Turn the heater off. It's pretty, pretty loud. Alright. Got Zach down here getting some windows prepped. All we're doing down here, they got the Nadura block walls all the way around. Warms up real nice down here. It's already probably 45 when it was like 20. But spray three inches up there in that rim joist. This one's pretty tight, but the customer drilled some holes for us, so we should be able to kind of work with that, hopefully. If not, we might have to drill a couple more holes. Pretty straightforward. Rim joist over here, all the way around. Take it back upstairs. Show you what, oh, turn the heater back on first. Keep it nice and toasty down here. Take it back upstairs. Phase two of the project is they're gonna come through, put sheetrock up on this ceiling here. Ceil flat ceilings back here. We're coming, we're gonna spray down on those ceilings. This one's a little tricky. Testing our uh, thermal envelope knowledge when we were bidding the job. Because right there, we're spraying, right here is a scissored truss system. We're spraying the roof slopes all the way up there from Eve up to this little blocker material that they made for us. Right there, all the way across. And the reason they had to block that off is because we're spraying this flat ceiling back this way. So this whole wall here would be a cold wall because this attic space is going to be cold from this insulation being on the floor or on the ceiling, whatever you want to call it. So they're going to come in with sheetrock, sheetrock this whole back wall. The builder, we worked with him to explain that that needs to be blocked off. So we can basically come with a thermal envelope up this wall, across that diagonal, and all the way down here. And then we gotta spray this gable here. And I'll spin around here and they're gonna sheetrock this this side of this gable, I guess you'd call this triangle. And uh, we'll spray from the back side when we're in that attic spraying down on that ceiling. Pretty uh, chopped up, chopped up roof. Is also over here. We're gonna have to kind of get acrobatic and spray this scissor truss ceiling. We don't typically like to do that, but the reason we had to was because it would have been too much of a pain to figure out if we sprayed this roof deck. A, it's a lot more square footage, and B, if you come over here. We're spraying this flat ceiling. That roof dives way up into there. So 
the spray, this roof slope was out of the question because that's just a ton of square footage and they don't really need sprayed if we can spray this flat ceiling here. So to figure out how to spray this roof slope, which ties into that roof slope, plus over here, it's tough to tell, but up there is another roof that kind of goes over top of this, over top of this section of that roof slope. So we'd be kind of like stopping our foam here, stopping our foam there, coming over here, stopping our foam in a big triangle here. It just didn't make sense. So we're gonna probably blow a hole out right there where they temporarily blocked it. We'll be able to reach out from the port to spray a big chunk of that. And once that foam hardens up, we can, uh, we can stand right on that and work right off because we're putting six and a half inches of foam out there to meet our 49. Well, that's phase two. We'll figure that out later. I gotta get a sheetrocker in here to uh, get sheetrock up so we have something to spray to, but, but that's our project for today, probably tomorrow, and then we'll come back in a couple weeks or whenever they can get someone in here. It's tough finding labor guys to get in here right now with material shortages and all these price increases we're dealing with, but so yeah, we'll uh, get a few videos of us spraying, do a walkthrough at the end of the day today. And then we'll see you again tomorrow to uh, show you what we're doing tomorrow. See you then. The end of the day here. Make sure I watch my steps so I don't tumble down these stairs. <clears throat> but uh, come back down this basement, show you what we've done so far. So we got up into there the three inches of closed cell foam all the way around. Typically, we like to uh, wrap that sill plate right there, but that's a 2 by 12 sill plate that goes right from this front. All the way to the back so they're, they're, and they're gonna be finishing with sheetrock right up to that point here so we can't have our foam wrapping right there so it's unfortunate but they do have a sealer in that gap all the way across so it's not the worst but that will be a weak spot in this place but foam all the way around up in those rim joists, nothing really, nothing much really to look at down here. This uh, this spot over here was quite the pain in the butt, but we got her done. Tough to see, but there's there's foam all up in there. <clears throat> That's where we started. Take you back upstairs. Everything went pretty well today. Had to switch guns. That Carlisle gun had been on the hose for three months and a week, I think. And just the last two jobs that I've done with it, it's been a pain in the butt. I haven't been able to get it dialed in very well. So I swapped guns and we really started to crank out the foam. Right here is just a spot that I started to spray when we were running out of a set of drums. Zach was out getting those prepped and swapped over. So I just went to there just to get it emptied out. And then came up here, went up into this room. This is the time-lapse videos you saw. Got those walls sprayed. And then I sprayed all of that roof slope up there. Six and a half inches of clothes on that roof slope. And then that gable that I was talking about there, I sprayed that blocker, so now they can run sheetrock right up that vertical wall there to that corner. And from the backside, when I'm up spraying the attic 
the attic floor there, I'll be able to turn around and hit all this all the way up and met and wrap up to my phone there. So that'll keep the uh, thermal envelope intact. It's a thermal envelope day. I've said it about a hundred times, I think, in this video. But so when we come back tomorrow, all I gotta do is hit these walls up here. What's left of them, anyways? The walls up here are about a set of foam, but I've already sprayed a good chunk of them, so that'll be the end of phase one, and I already explained what phase two is, so come back tomorrow, hit these walls, and then uh, come back in two, three weeks when they get the sheetrock up, maybe a month, who knows, you never know how fast things are going to get done, um, and then we'll get the rest done, so. Day two, we're back here. Just gotta spray these walls. You guys already know that, so I won't waste your guys' time with explaining what we got going on again. But I'll get a couple more videos of me spraying, and then I'll uh, <clears throat> do a final walkthrough at the end of the day. And then we'll be ready for phase two of this project. But that's that, so I'll see you guys at the end of the video. All right guys, about 12 o'clock. Made pretty good time on these walls, but here they are. All the walls sprayed. Three inches of closed cell foam. I actually packed up the hose and thought we were all done before. And I came back in for the final walkthrough and realized I hadn't sprayed that cable yet. So we pulled it all back out. Insulated that up there, because basically the sheet rockers, when they come, they're gonna wanna now they can do all of their work. They can put sheet rock right up the walls and right up the roof slopes, ceilings to get it ready for us. But yeah, not a whole lot to look for or look at. In this house, it'll get a, uh, um, a whole house ventilator system in it because it's going to be so tight in here that they're going to have to uh, let the house breathe, as most people say. But like us spray foam guys, we all say, uh, insulate it tight and ventilate it right because why not have your house as insulated as possible and ventilate it so you control your environment the entire time you control what air comes in you can put filters on these ventilators it just makes your house so much more comfortable something I forgot yesterday I went over in the beginning but never did the 
walkthrough in the end. We got this garage we actually did yesterday. This is just three inches of close cell all the way around it. Um, yeah. So that's this house finished for now. We'll come back for phase two when it's ready. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you can, like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video.